Richard Branson went into space as a space tourist. So why don't we have companies like SpaceX or Blue Origin or even Virgin Galactic in India? The truth is, it wasn't even possible before 2020 because everything was done by ISRO. But now even private players are allowed to participate in standalone space activities. And today we'll be talking about two companies which build ancillary for space tech all over the globe and India as well. But before we begin, you know the drill, I need you to comment right now. Space tech is an interesting investing theme because... Today, we're going to talk about two companies, and they're fairly small. The first company is MTAR Technologies. This company actually IPO'd in March 2021, which is fairly recent, and the stock price has moved up a lot. So this company is a precision engineering company, which means it builds products which require high amount of precision to actually work which is a great moat, right? Because not all manufacturing companies can do precision engineering to be used in things like a rocket. Three, two, one, zero. This company has three business segments. We have nuclear power, space and defense, and clean energy. But this video is themed space, so let's focus on just their space business. The cool thing is that they have been working with ISRO for 30 years. Now that tells me two things, that they know what they're building. ISRO obviously likes those things and have used it in actual products. And it seems like this relationship wouldn't break over a long period of time. The company basically manufactures critical components for rockets. Now, ISRO basically has two rockets. The first one is the PSLV and the GSLV, which is much larger and can carry much more satellites into space. Now, every rocket I'm sure you've seen is divided into different parts or different stages. Now, this company manufactures critical components for each of these stages, right from the first stage, that's the bottom, and then parts for the second and third stage components like the GS2 and the cryogenic engines. And then they also develop control components and modules like the hot gas roll control module, the high pressure regulator model, and the POGO model. Now, since it's really difficult for investors to actually understand all of this, so let's focus on the financials. The last five years financials has been interesting. We can see that the revenue CAGR is 21.3% and the EBITDA is 36.8%, which means it's actually making a better profit than the revenue in terms of growth. Now, why is that? If you look at how the cost is structured, that's where the answer is. You can see that the margin is increasing. That means it's making more money per rupee from the revenue. How is it really doing that? So the clue is in the cost. If you look at the cost of goods, it's almost the same going from 29% to 34%. The manufacturing expenses, also the same. Roughly 15% has been quite straight throughout. What has changed is the employee expenses. That's gone from 41% to 24%. So an efficient set of employees have actually been able to scale the business and that's where the margin is. And apart from this, it has really healthy cash flow generation. So 97% of the EBITDA actually comes from core operations. Remember in the previous videos, we've talked about this. You want core operations to form majority of revenues and not other income. So that's a good thing. Another thing is that it's almost debt free. The debt to equity ratio is 0.04, which is actually almost zero. From the IPO, the company is mostly raised for working capital and repayment of borrowings. The reason is that its company uses same machinery and the same facilities for all different sectors. However, one problem is that the PE ratio is extremely high. That's 98.9, it's almost 100. So you should definitely find out why that is and if it's really justified. I can see here that the company depends mainly on the public sector for revenues, at least in the domestic portion. 
and the working capital cycle that cycle of when the order is placed and the money comes back is 256 days uh, this should be much much shorter 256 days is a very long time most of its money actually 50% of revenue comes from one single client that's bloom energy the company needs to diversify its client base especially with b2b companies because if that one client stops paying then that really affects revenue so now let's see the future prospects i have two points here the first is that the company has a strong order book of 416 crores and this is almost 2x of its current revenue so we know that there is some cash flow coming in in the next few years the order book itself has also grown at a cagr of 27% so it's likely that this will continue but this is only the last 3 years of data and then we know that it's a trusted partner of isro which i'm sure is not an easy thing to do and the company has registered a 35% growth in space what you need to understand and figure out is can the company grow another 10x from here and if it can then you may have a thesis to continue your research into perhaps your investment thesis will be based on the space theme itself so for investors right it's very exciting to find a mega trend a trend that could change the industry and also create wealth for you as an investor if that company does very well we have this interesting course by utpal shet he's the ceo of rakesh junjunwala's company rare enterprises and he teaches in this course about different ways you can find out about mega trends he talks about clear leaders near leaders and emerging leaders this is a great way to analyze an industry the framework that he's taught so if you're interested to understand how to create and identify near leaders or emerging leaders this course will really be helpful do check it out the first lesson is free the second company is astra microwave you know this company came in the news after radha krishna damani bought 1% of this company the company started in 1991 and creates really niche products like radars modulators transmitters and amplifiers these products can communicate in frequencies that easily penetrate through haze rain sunshine or snowfall and that makes it really useful for telecom defense etc starting 2004 astra microwave has really helped isro like in the previous company it was helping in rockets astra microwaves more focused on satellites it helps in designing developing and producing space grade satellites for the indian satellite program in fact every single indian satellite released since 2007 has somewhere an astra microwave part in it Now let's look at the financials a little closer. If you look at the revenue and see the revenue distribution, you see that space contributes 36% of revenue, uh, which is why we're doing a video on it. The interesting part is that the revenue has grown 60% in FY20 and about 38% in 21. So who's the real contributor for this? We don't know yet because the results aren't out. but we know that space itself has grown 5x the question is will this really continue in the future the only way to tell for a b2b company like this is to see its order book and the order book is 1383 crores which is pretty decent one deception with order books is that we don't know when the orders will actually get executed and the money will be realized So there are two problems here how long will it take for the company to deliver its services or the product and second when will that money come so the company clearly states that it has an execution period of 12 months to 24 months now if you believe what the company is saying that's pretty decent assuming there are no delays that's a pretty decent execution time and of course we have to check the debt to equity ratio to know how much loan this company has which is only 0.23x which is very very low it's almost zero And let's see some of the negatives too. We know that it has a high working capital of 337 days. This is primarily because it's working with the public sector company most of the times. The P ratio is also decently high at 55x, but as you know, the story is just unfolding. If you as an investor think space tech is a good theme, then P ratios shouldn't be something that you should worry about. if the growth potential and the company is actually growing very very fast so i leave that decision to you and the third negative thing is guys you're not clicking on the special link in the description below you will get two months extra if you go and subscribe on learnapp why wouldn't you do that 
Okay, anyway, we're trying really hard to do well on YouTube and pushing out content that you will enjoy. And if you've reached the end, you should definitely check out these videos we've done over here. I hope you like them. Please click on the subscribe and the bell icon so every time we come up with a new video, you get a notification. See you in the next video.